And now it's time to get to business and talk about music business and the music industry. So this week, Facebook coach. My name is Patricia Fabio. And uh, today, for today, for this week's uh, Facebook post, in the world music, we have to talk about um, the touring side of the music industry. And I thought this was kind of coincidental, I don't know, in a weird way, because I was talking about the story I'm going to talk about earlier this week with some friends. Um, as I said before, I work at a, at the college radio station, so we talk a lot about, you know, what's going on and with artists, not so technical as like in the businessy side, but we do, we gossip. <laughs> and one band we were gossiping about was Arcade Fire, who uh, released a poorly received album this year, Everything Now. Uh, I used to be a big fan of the band. I actually reviewed the, the album, which was poorly received. I did not like it. If you want to read the review, it's on Out Loud Multimedia. Um, but anyway, enough of the self-promotion. The story is about Arcade Fire and how they, for their tour, they booked arenas. And they are not playing full arenas. And having just taken the midterm, there was a thing about underplay, which is playing to uh, playing in a venue that's too big for you or playing for an audience that's too big for you if you don't know you can sell out the arena. The problem with this is that Arcade Fire before were selling out arenas. Well, not so much arenas. They were selling out venues, and I think now they went for the arena thing because when Butler over Arcade Fire, he kind of has this U2 complex or like this Coldplay complex where like we've made it now, and they are a widespread name now. Um, they won a Grammy for the suburbs like five, five, six years ago, so that's probably why they took the arena leap, but having, they weren't able to back it up with a good album, so nobody went to go see them. I know for a fact because they came down here and they didn't play an arena. They played at the venue that's at UM. I don't know the exact name. That is an arena though, right? Anyway, uh, a friend of mine told me that he didn't go, but some people he knew went because the way they got in is you either could buy a ticket or you could buy the album and you would get a ticket, which is a desperate move in my opinion, but it makes sense because that album was a mess. So. Getting to the actual article, uh, it's from the Independent, which is a UK publication online. The headline is, Are Kid Fire Reporting Playing to Half Empty Arenas? And it says, heading, the band released their latest album, Everything Now, this summer to a mixed rece reception. Um, basically, it says that the figures have been very low for arenas. Um, just 4,000 people were in Quebec City, 4,000 in Tampa, 5,000 in Austin and 5,000 in Dallas. Their biggest audience has been that of Vancouver, which was 15,000, but the band is Canadian, so it was probably like one of those things. But even the singer, Lynn Butler, frontman, acknowledged it to the crowd in Vancouver. He said, we've played cities three times as big as, the, as this one to half as many people, so we really appreciate it. So, um, yeah, Ottawa show, 5,000 people. Whereas in 2014, when they did their Reflector tour, um, ten, up to 10,000 people were there. So it's almost like half of their audience and their fan base has just disappeared, me included, because I, was, I, was, I wasn't like a huge fan of their last album, but I thought it was good. And I almost went to see them live, but it was a plus 21 show. And at the time, I was 18? 17. I was 17. Okay. So, yeah. What do you think about this? Are you a fan of Arcade Fire? Did you like their last album? Um, yeah, let me know. This is the story. And it, yeah.